Um, you'll see I'm not alone today. i got a friend in the studio, David Lewis. He's the new executive director of the Mississippi Arts Commission. And, man, y'all are up to some good things, so welcome. Thanks for having me again. And Rebecca. congratulations. Thank you. It's a, it's a new job. I've been here for about a month. <laughs> Um, and it's exciting and wonderful. You jumped in, uh, feet on the ground, running, and I hear y'all have got some great things to uh, give out to those that may be looking for grants or other opportunities. But first, David, let's talk about the Arts Commission, because I feel like if I don't know enough about it, then there's probably a lot of folks who also don't know much about it. So when you're giving your elevator speech for the last four weeks, <laughs> <laughs> how do you sort of explain or encompass all that you guys um, do there? Well, very basically, we are the state's agency for granting and programming for arts, artists, arts organizations, and even teaching artists. So anything related to the arts, we're usually the point people for that, and we provide a lot of really great grants for people all throughout the state. What, when you say, oh, what, should the government or whatever be in the arts? Absolutely they should because it helps to sort of trampoline into other things. But how, how important is it that these grants and these opportunities are out there for the arts in Mississippi? Well, there's a tremendous impact that arts and culture has on Mississippi's GDP. So there's a very strong economic development angle for this and economic impact angle. But also, Mississippi is known for its arts, and mm-hmm. so we try to cultivate that and make sure that the next B.B. King and the next Oprah are, are well supported, but also trying to really cultivate a place in a state where artists feel supported to stay and to thrive. You know, there are a lot of great people who are here doing amazing art and creating great culture, and so we're here to support that and, and lift those up. I love on your website, it says, the creative legacy of our state is still being written, and yes. I think we have to remember that, yes, we have our greats that we always and our icons that we look back to that really, you know, set Mississippi on a map for literature and arts and all things. We've got some great young ones that are coming up and two, you know, midlife ones, not just babies, right. but they're coming up and doing um, exceptional things, putting Mississippi on the map. Um, I don't know if you're an American Idol watcher. I was just about to I say. say <laughs> just last night, we had a two, Mississippian, two Mississippians sort of make their mark. And hopefully they'll be here on good things uh, before before too long. But, I mean, the, it, the list just keeps going on and on. But it's hard to sort of get your breakout moment. And I know that's why a lot of the grants and the support you guys do is so important. So you have some grants um, coming up here, I guess, when the deadline's fast approaching, kind of. Yes. Yeah, so uh, the uh, window to apply for the majority of our grants is February 1st to March 1st. So coming right up here mm-hmm. in a few weeks. There's still time to apply. In fact, we have a grant writer workshop tomorrow night at 5.30 that will be a webinar online. So you can go to our website and find out information about that. But it'll be a great opportunity for tips on revising, editing, proofreading, and and fine-tuning that grant. So it's a great opportunity to learn how to even write a grant. So that's going right now. We have just a wide array of different types of grants for different types of people as well. Because I think an artist listening probably is like, I'm not like in the grant kind of, that's not usually what I look for, right? They may put their hat out and ask for some coins or whatever, you know, when they're, when they're out playing or maybe, you know, going to their side gigs and trying to work their way up. So let's talk about these grants, David. Like, what do they look like? What are they for? I mean, how could someone utilize some of the funds that you have available? And I know it's all different stages and phases. Right. So <laughs> let's let's start with artists because you talked about artists. Yeah. So for an artist, an individual, we have artist fellowships. Now that is going to be, I think, up to $5,000 for the artist to be able to get supplies that they may need to create new work. So we take a look at their portfolio. It's very, I think it's pretty portfolio driven. So we take a look at their work and, and it allows them to take that next step. So if they're a musician and they need some new uh, performing gear or if they are an artist who needs some new uh, equipment to like an easel or even some sort of special like if it's a spray painting artist they might need some sort of special sprayer uh, that equipment is, is what helps take them sometimes to the next level yeah. and it, like a, a screen printer might need a new piece of you know a replacement part for their machinery so this is a great opportunity for them to create new work with this extra boost but they also have individual artist project grants so this is if an artist is going to do a project in the community 
and wants to give back to their community, this is going to go for that. So, like a mural, yeah, or a... a mural, or even somebody said that they were they recorded an album with community members. So, oh, fun. It, rather than it being kind of a, an album for themselves, which is wonderful and great, this artist chose to actually use musicians within his own community and made it a part of the whole, you know, his whole town as a part of this album. So there was that was a great example of of an artist individual artist project grant. Yeah. Lots of things to sort of think about and mull over into. I hope even if this doesn't apply to you, like I have no desire to make albums or do anything like that. But you may have someone creative in your, you know, in your circle that does and would never have thought of this being something that could fit for them. Because now I'm understanding the grant writing process, David, where you would have to show purpose for the new equipment or right. whatever. It's not just asking for money. It's right. like, hey, this is what I need. This is what it costs. This is what it go for. You know that kind of that kind of thing. Yep, and there's another really cool part of a, a grant opportunity. So Mississippi is full of traditional and folk artists, and so there is a folk arts apprenticeship grant. This is really cool, and and it's for artists who are looking to train the next generation of of up and coming, let's say, blues musicians or or painters. If it's a traditional or folk art, you can actually get a grant to work with another person to. Tr- to pass that trade along to the next generation. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, again, it's, it's, it's investing in continuing those rich traditions that is, is throughout all of Mississippi. So that would be the person that would be the one learning or the person that would do the learning? That's a great I mean, question. So I think that it is, <laughs> um, it is for a master folk artist and apprentice to work together. Um, so um, I'm not quite – I'm trying to read – my fact sheet because I'm still new to the job uh, okay. on who applies for it, but, um, but one or the way, other, yeah, they can go and learn. Right. And, and where do you find out all the information about the grants? All of that information is on our website at arts.ms.gov. Now, are the grant process, are they daunting? No. And it, it can kind of seem daunting. That's but a four letter word. Right. Well, it's also just like, it, it can just be overwhelming. There's a lot of questions that ask. One of the things that I really want to stress to people is that our staff is incredible and always there to answer questions. So just reach out. In fact, we have an office hour every single day, except for today because it's a state holiday. So, But every single day of the week, we have an office hour from noon to one. People can hop on a Zoom call, and there's going to be somebody there to answer your questions. And if you have any further questions, just email us or, or give us a call. They're very, our staff is very hands-on in helping make sure that everybody's questions are answered. If you're even even if you don't maybe have access to a computer or are, are curious about navigating that, we've had people come into the office and fill out a paper application before. So our staff will help walk you through that process the best of their ability. Could this also be for teachers for things they're doing in their classroom, or is it specifically for like individuals in the community? That's a great question. So. I would. There are a lot of different qualifications. I would just check out based on the way that that individual was structures their grant. But I say that to say there's a program that we have called the Whole Schools Initiative that works in schools, training teachers to bring art principles into core curriculum pr- uh, classes. So math, sciences. All of those principles, are they, they work to bring arts into that. So there's a great initiative that we have called Whole Schools that you could check out. But we also have a teaching artist roster. So if you're an artist who is, is also a certified teaching artist in the state of Mississippi, you can apply to be a part of our teaching artist roster and, get, and, and be able to access additional grant opportunities through that. Or teachers can also reach out to this roster and bring in a dancer, a dance instructor, or a painter and, and know how to get – the, the the right professional into the room to teach their kids. This is neat. How long has the art commission been around? A uh, little over six, somewhere between fifty and sixty years, I believe. Um, it was established in nineteen sixty eight. Yeah, so we're, I just happen to have it pulled up. It's I think it's a little over. I don't think we're quite at sixty yet. Is that right? Is that math? Oh, math is hard, especially on a holiday. 70. Sorry, gosh, 70. Oh, but we look 60, right? Right, we, we look no more than 50. <laughs> no more than 50. No, we're almost 70. I was thinking about this because you know me. Uh, our last interview, I think, was about the bicentennial. I love an anniversary. So I was thinking the other day, I was like, when, when is the next big time that we can celebrate right. age? I think it's 70. I think it's 70. Well, I think there's a lot to celebrate. It feels like this is a best-kept secret for a lot <laughs> yes. of folks. How many um, grants do you guys normally hand out every year? That's a great question. So it can be several hundred of them. Really? I know that, yes. So it's not like, oh, there's only one? No, no, no. We actually, um, I, we really try to grant as many people as possible. So we don't necessarily 
necessarily give the maximum amount, we will actually try to look at our holistic budget, which last year was, I think, $1.6 million, over $1.6 million, and then try to award as much of uh, the award that we can give to as many people as possible. And that also includes one we haven't talked about, which is arts organizations. All right. Well, that's a perfect place mm-hmm. to pause. We've got more coming up with David Lewis, Executive Director for Mississippi Arts Commission, coming up next. Good, David, I feel like. Because, man, last couple of, well, it's just Mississippi. It's, and it's just Mississippi. And it's still February, so anything's coming. We haven't had spring break yet. Another right. cold snap's on the way. But let's just enjoy the fact that today... <laughs> It's a little bit of a sunshiny day and that there's lots of good opportunities with the Mississippi Arts Commission if you're the creative type. And we didn't get to all of it. We kind of hit on like the musician side of it, but you were sort of uh, teasing us with another thing. So what else y'all got going on? That's there? right. We uh, also serve as arts organizations throughout the state and for general sort of nonprofits or city entities. If you want to do an arts based project, we've got grants for you. And so. We do a large operating grant for arts organizations. So this may be the Mississippi Symphony Orchestra, or it might be the Walter Anderson Museum on the coast, or it could be the B.B. King Museum in Indianola. All these organizations apply for operational dollars, and those are our largest grants, so up to, up to $30,000 for them to be able to stay open and operating. Um, and so <clears throat> that's one really great one. And then, again, there's the project grants for organizations, so that's like – and that's up to five thousand dollars. So that's like if um, and and it requires a dollar for dollar match. So that's like if they want to come in and do a mural or do a festival or um, something very specific and project based, sort of has a timeline, a start and an end date. Um, that those are pretty um, wide open as well, and and have a a pretty wide right array, uh, wide array of things that you can actually qualify for. So it's all about creativity, right? And so whatever way you want to get creative and, and pitch those ideas, we're ready to listen to them. We talked about the musician part. When you think of arts, that's like that and then like painting are the two things that come <laughs> to mind. But outside of that box, how have Mississippians gone outside the box and used dollars from the Mississippi Arts Commission to be creative in their communities. Well, one really other strong uh, arm that we have in Mississippi is our literary strength. You know, we have a lot of amazing writers come out of Mississippi. So we have a strong poet program. We have a poet laureate uh, in, in Mississippi that's through the Arts Commission. But we also have this really amazing program that's coming up uh, next month called Poetry Out Loud through the uh, National Endowment for the Arts. And this is a program that... Uh, equips high school students to uh, do like spoken word poetry. It's like a competition and they go on to nationals and it's That's a pretty cool. amazing way for us to really represent. We actually have uh, have won the we have we've had someone win the championship, the national really? championship in our state. Not very many states have that. I feel like that's a good thing I need to know about. It's an amazing thing, and in fact, uh, I found out the other day that the NEA really loves to show off Mississippi for other small states, and they'll have like all like I think Vermont or New Hampshire called the other day and was like, "We're supposed to kind of watch what you're doing with your program. How do we do that?" And so, yeah, it's a really great oh, cool. way for us to shine, uh, especially our literary strength. Well, that's really neat. Yeah. And so is that in, like happening in the schools or if we've got folks that are into uh, – have kids who are into poetry or whatever? How do you get involved with that? That's a great question. I know that our website has a lot of information about that. Um, I know that they are in training right now with the top whatever the ones that have been selected to kind of go to compete. Um, it's actually at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Uh, we have an award or like a whole ceremony thing that happens um, on March 9th. It's the day after Arts Day at the Capitol, which we host at the state capitol. Well, tell us about that. That must be coming up. That's the, Yeah, it's an exciting day where we get to really show off the arts. We're working with um, our advocates and our, our friends all over the state to come together in the capital city to celebrate arts and the various forms that it, it, it manifests. And so it'll have a whole array of programming around it. But you'll be able to find us, the Arts Commission, in the rotunda with all of our programs programming information and can ask our staff any questions if you just want to find a way to find us in person. Uh, We'll be there from, I think, 1 o'clock to 4.30 that day. When you think about Mississippi and the Bicentennial, which I guess we're coming up on 200 what? Three or four? No, six, seven. Two, yeah, something like because it was in uh, 1817. (laughs) So So we're (laughs) we're coming on 
206. 206. Okay. She's still young. But uh, when you think about what brings us all together, it's our food, obviously, and our culture, but our arts. Yes. And I think that's one thing that we all take pride in, mm-hmm. no matter what they, you know, it doesn't matter background. If you're come from Mississippi and, you know, you're rocking it and your perspective art, like we support you. Right. Absolutely. Everybody can get behind it. It's a very unifying, common, you know, common denominator that everybody can rally around because it just brings people together. What is it about the arts that intrigued you to take on leadership there at the Mississippi Arts Commission, David? Although you've got a laundry list of a great resume of supporting the (laughs) city and all the things it does. Well, Mississippi, like you said, it it is so much rooted in its identity in the arts. I mean, the arts are the heartbeat of Mississippi for me, whether it's the blues to uh, Eudora Welty's writing to her photography. I mean, a lot of people knew that Eudora was a photographer and an incredible photographer at that to, um, you know, uh, the films that have been made here, yeah. the film industry is I booming think that's here. that's just getting started. Yeah, I know it's amazing, and there's a great there's a there's a whole film office dedicated to it. Nina Parikh over there is doing some amazing work, and uh, and and they're just and then even like how much tourism is rooted in you know you have the blues trail and you have all the juke joints and, and festivals all across the state, whether on the coast or whether you have the Neshoba County Fair, even that's full of art. I mean, you walk to the Neshoba County Fair, you walk in, you see all those colorful uh, cabins just lined up and you can see how much we sort of uh, emit creativity and arts in Mississippi and I think it's such a great place and we we really pride ourselves to be able to really continue to help support and amplify that story. I also think encouraging that in your kids because it's such a great way for them to express themselves in yes. a safe manner. Yes, absolutely. Like in, a, in an encouraging manner. I did have a text, David. Someone said, may have missed it, but does Mississippi Arts Commission help community theaters? And if you do, help. Yes, absolutely. Our theaters are really strong and um integral part of this. I mean, I was a community theater kid and we've got some great ones in Jackson. We have New Stage Theater. So if there's a if it's a community theater, look for our programming, uh, operational programmings, or even our, our project grants. Um, that's a great opportunity to plug in and get a grant for, for um, any of the programming being done or the organization itself. Um, we also, last year, were able to do uh, a bring back and hope to continue to bring back and expand this amazing grant, grant opportunity called the Building Fund for the Arts. This was actually $3, three million dollars the state gave us to be able to invest in arts facilities. A lot of them were community theaters. And so if if they've got walls they need to repair or restrooms they need to upgrade or uh, like, you know, just anything or if they want to expand, uh, this is a great opportunity for, for them to be able to apply for um, – dollars that they can put into the actual building itself because our 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 creative spaces are the places where community really happens right like where we can come together and watch a play or right. hear a musical or, or watch a, a lot performance. of times they're historic they are they're important and and it's we we see the value in that so that's why we're trying to increase and expand that program we'll know at the end of this year or the end of this session whether um, we'll be able to continue that so we hope to be able to do that um, and we'll know more about the summer so that great is not open right now, but stay tuned because we really hope to be able to continue that. Um, and so, yeah, our theaters are an amazing part of the fabric of, of who our state is. I did not realize until starting Good Things how many community theaters we, uh, we actually have. Yes. I would have thought New Stage and maybe like one obviously in the north and probably one in the south, but then like there's almost one, not in every county, but, but within driving distance yes, of every county. Absolutely. Is, and they do some amazing work. Absolutely. So that's really cool. So well, you're always welcome back if, if you have good news to share in terms of grant opportunities, David. I appreciate that. But I, you know, the fact that you were a community theater kid, just, I, I can see it now. <laughs> so what was your shining moment on stage? What what well, role did you... I was a brother in a, a production of uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat up in Madison at one point, and uh, did a little bit. I, I knew a lot of people in community theater here in the metro area, and uh, that was really the only play I got to do. I did some uh, theater at my high school at Jackson Academy, but um, wish I had been able to do more. And maybe one day I'll get back into it. You know, they say you're never too late to right. get on stage if it's calling you. Right. There you go. <laughs> uh, maybe that's next. Maybe that's the back half of your life. That's, right. You know, in your <laughs> every time I have new stage on, they'll like, yes, Rebecca, come on. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. You should do it. No, I could probably do really well at some impromptu, but if you made me like remember lines right. and then have to like say them as if they're natural. Maybe it could That's be a one woman show. Everything would completely just crumble around. Maybe it's just a one woman radio show is the premise of the 
the whole thing. And you could just build it from there, and every night is different. And every night is different. You know, that, that, I've had a little practice at that. That might, that might, art, you never know what You never know. You never know what form it's going to come in. Well, obviously, there's a lot of great opportunities. You've, you spit out a lot of good information, David, but everybody can go where if they are interested in learning more. Arts.ms.gov. All righty. I feel like this is first of many. So you're welcome back anytime, David. Thank you so much. You guys stick with us. we got more for you coming up next.